Okay, you're right. Welcome to your video tutorial today, looking at angles and parallel lines. Okay, parallel lines are indicated in a diagram by lines with little arrows across them. Like in the diagram down here, see these little arrows? They indicate that this line here and that line there are parallel. A line that intersects them or cuts them through like this is called a transversal. Now, it doesn't have to go beyond, it might just go from there to there, but it basically joins or intersects a pair of parallel lines. When we do this, when a transversal cuts parallel lines, a whole lot of special angles form. And that's what we're going to look at today. Three particular types of angles that form when a transversal cuts parallel lines. The first type of angle that forms, forms are corresponding angles. What you need to know is that corresponding angles are equal when a transversal cuts them. It's only when the lines are parallel though, okay? So the lines must be parallel. And corresponding angles form in two particular spots. This spot is corresponding to that spot, okay? It almost looks as if they form an F, like I have over here. I like to remember it, and I'll show you in this diagram how the F goes. It can be upside down on the side, but it has to be at that point underneath the F and that point tucked in there. It can't be here and here, okay, because they're another type of angle. So corresponding angles, and they are equal, like I just said. They are equal. So if this, for example, was, say, 35 degrees this here would also be 35 degrees. Okay, I've just come up with that number, but corresponding angles are equal. Sometimes I like to remember it, the F as in corresponding. Sometimes I say, I say it funny, I say corresponding, and that helps me remember that the corresponding angles will be in the shape of an F. Okay, the other type of angles that form when a transversal crosses a parallel lines are, is alternate angles, okay? And they are in these two positions, on alternative sides of the transversal. I like to remember alternate angles with this letter Z. I like to think of the letter Z in the alphabet as the most alternate whoo, letter of the alphabet. So in this spot here and this spot here, those angles are called alternate and they are also equal. The last angles that form when a transversal cuts parallel lines are cointerior angles. Cointerior angles add up to 180. They're not equal like the other two, they add up to 180. And they form this little C, so they're in, tucked in here, in these two. And when you look at them, they almost look like they form part of a C. Okay, they add up to 180. So what will you be asked to do in order to prove you know this? Here's the first type of question. It says, state the type of angle relationship for the diagram. Now, I, it said at the right, I've just put it underneath, sorry. I originally had it over the other side. And says, find the value of the pronumeral. So the answer for A, state the type of angle relationship. Well, that's one in there and one in there. They form the C. So the answer is co-interior. That's the angle relationship of those two. Find the value. Now I know cointerior angles add up to 180. So I know that M is going to be 180 minus whatever the other angle is. In this case, it's 45. So M is going to equal 135 degrees. 135 degrees. Okay, another question that you might be asked to do is find the value of the pronumeral in the diagram and give some reasons. Oh, okay. Um, oh, hold on. They don't form any letter, do they? There's one down there and one down there. It'd have to be this guy would have to be in here for these two to be corresponding, so that doesn't really work, does it? Oh, what else do I know? What could I do? Okay. 
Oh, actually, hold on. If I work out this in here, I'll be able to find out the pronumeral. What do I know? How could I work out that's what that is in there? Hmm. Oh, hold on. That's a straight line there, which means the whole way around, that's going to be 180. So 120 minus, oh, sorry, 180 minus 120 gives me 60 degrees. So it's 60 degrees in there. Now that I've found that, this guy in here, this angle in here, is corresponding to this angle in here. Okay, those two are corresponding, which means that x equals 60 degrees. Reasons? One, supplementary angles. Remember we learned that last lesson. Supplementary angles. And then the second reason is corresponding. Okay, so first off, this guy in here, this little guy in here, was supplementary to the 120. And then once I found him, I knew that this little guy down the bottom was equal to this one here because they're both corresponding. And that's it, guys. That's angles and parallel lines.